As we move into John chapter 2, we start with the first of eight miracles of John. Our first of eight miracles that John tells us about because we know there's far more miracles than this. Matthew records 22. One verse even tells us that many other miracles were done but not recorded. So did they get so used to miracles that it became very commonplace? They didn't even write them down anymore? I, I find that fascinating. And what this tells me is if John picks eight of them, there must be significant reasons to choose these eight. So that's what I want to explore over the next few videos, uh, starting with this first one. What are, why, why are these miracles? Why are these the ones that John recorded? And the first one is water into wine. Why in the world would water into wine be the first miracle? Of all the ways to begin your ministry, listen to what, it, what, what John says. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. The first thing to understand about what's going on here is weddings in this time period. Usually what we would call an engagement period would normally be a year in this time period. The couple would be apart, and usually the family was working on a dowry in this time. What is what is this woman worth to this new man, or what can they provide this family that's losing the, the woman? The families made a deal, and then it was customary for the bride and the groom, once all this was done, is to drink from a special glass of wine as a blessing that all the details were set and everyone was excited about it moving forward. And as a father of two daughters, I really like how this used to go and kind of wish it was the same way, but I digress. Once the engagement was over, the wedding would happen and it would typically take about five to seven days. You might run out of wine because we're talking about something that's five to seven days long, a party that's going on and on and on. Now you should be prepared, but this is why this could possibly happen. It's important to understand at this point how many times the church is called Jesus's bride. We are his bride. Revelation 21, nine says, one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of, ses of the seven last plagues came and said to me, come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. We are the bride, the wife, of the Lamb of God, which John has talked about quite a bit to this point, which we have covered in so many details. And now we're covering the part where we are the bride. And this deal that was made for the bride of Jesus, Jesus paid that price. And we remember that price as we drink from a special cup of wine, which is way too controversial for the church today. So it's grape juice. But nevertheless, we remember the price that was paid this and we say a blessing over it and we wait for the engagement to end how many connection points do we have here the other aspect of this engagement time in jewish customs was while the engagement was going on the groom was away building their future home he was preparing for their future marriage again connecting directly to what god says jesus is doing for us right now in heaven he says, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Here's the kicker. The bride doesn't really know exactly how long the groom will be, how long it will take to build this house. Once he was ready for his bride, he would then send a group of protecting men or friends to get his wife and they would shout once they reached the city or the home of this bride. And guess what Jesus does when he returns for his bride? We see it in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, when it says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. And then the celebration 
begins. For the wedding, the groom has prepared everything. The entire village will be invited to this party of the century. It was seven days of rejoicing and celebration. He has his bride and he's prepared everything in advance to show his love and very importantly, that he's ready to take care of her into this next life. Now, what if the wine runs out? After everything I just said, can you imagine after all that preparation, all this pomp and circumstance, what would it say to everyone and most of all to his new bride if he had not properly prepared enough wine? It would have been a dramatic message of unworthiness. Do you think that Jesus may have wanted to show us something pretty spectacular with his first miracle? Do you think Jesus, as he uses this bride analogy all over scripture, might have wanted to show us something with his first miracle about how there's nothing, nothing that will stop this special day that's coming for us. The outside observer says, this is the first miracle. I mean, really? That not a healing a blind man or raising someone from the dead? Something really, truly magnificent in our world? And God says, you are truly magnificent. Nothing is more important than you, my bride. Honestly, we just stop right there. That was the drop the mic moment, really. I, I'm, I'm gonna try and dig a little bit more into this book, but if, if you didn't write that down, you don't know how to take notes. With this miracle, Jesus is telling you something. There's a reason it's first. Nothing is gonna stop this wedding. Your home is being prepared. The wedding feast is being prepared. There's going to be enough wine prepared for a celebration like you've never experienced before. And God says, you are truly magnificent and nothing is more important than you, my bride. The other, the other part of these first verses to understand, if you want to continue to press in, is it seems like Jesus' mother knows exactly what Jesus can do. I have heard people ask about the first 30 years of Jesus' life and wonder, parents know like do they know that this was god like do they understand that my answer is usually well i think they probably understood it about the time of the virgin birth that that might have been the first clue that something was different about this particular son probably a tip off i mean the angel appearing uh, there was a few other unique things with his birth and some things that happened and some gifts and people that came from afar. So yeah, yeah, they probably knew who he was. Uh, when he's age 12, they kind of lose him for a moment and where they end up finding him is in the temple. And even in the temple when they're kind of mad thinking like, you know, where were you? He says, don't you know? Don't, didn't you know where I was? be I'm going to be in my father's house so yeah he's a boy but I think they know who he is in fact the only part I don't think they understood is what he had to do with his life while he was here if they knew that I think they wouldn't have rushed this first miracle he says it's not quite his time he does it anyway uh, his mother pushes him probably not realizing that once the miracles start the timeline is in motion and that motion is going to lead to the cross john 2 verse 5 says his mother said to his servants do whatever he asks do whatever he tells you nearby stood six stone water jars the kind used by the jews for the ceremonial washing holding from 20 to 30 gallons jesus said to the servants fill the jars with water so they filled them to the brim then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after. The guests have had too much to drink. But you, you have saved the best till now. See, the first key was, you are truly magnificent and nothing more, nothing is more important than you, my bride. 
But the second key, the second key is Jesus is the center of our joy. This celebration keeps going because of Jesus. Here's something interesting. Any wine would have been a miracle, right? But that's not what he did. His miracle was this is the best wine of the night. If they just had brought out more wine, everyone would have been happy. They would have been like, dodge the bullet there. That's not what it does. He brings out the best. Do we settle for anything less in this world than God's best? You know how many times the Bible tells us that God is the completion of joy in our life? A lot. We settle all the time. So often we settle for cheap wine in this life as a metaphor. We settle for cheap joy. And God wants the best for you. One of my favorite sections of scripture comes from Proverbs 3. Most people only know verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he'll make your path straight. I find people always know that scripture. It's kind of interesting. When the next part's the key, the next part says, do not be wise in your own eyes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This when you do that, you will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. It's really good, right? Still not the best part. Best part comes next. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over what? New wine. He wants you to experience new wine. This is the part we forget or never bother to memorize. He wants you to know his joy. He's able to give you something that you have not experienced at the party yet. We keep settling for the old wine. Any miracle that just keeps our past straight. We're just trying to make it through the day. Like, oh God, be with me today so I can make it through another day. No, that's not what we should be doing at all. His first miracle is turning water into wine. Don't settle for the ordinary in this life. That's not what God does. He never does that. He brings new wine. He doesn't put it in old wineskins. He gives you new wineskins and he fills it with the best. The old wineskin is that old life, those sins that you ask forgiveness for, the things you repented of. This is not just so you'll make it to heaven someday. No, party starts now. And it starts with the best wine you've ever had. Again, metaphor. <laughs> the best wine you've ever had. God doesn't create a few trees. Kind of why I'm outside today. He populates our earth with a bit of, of color and trees everywhere. And including places that we've never been. Every flower imaginable. Every color design. Every tree you can possibly think of. I just... I just uh, read something that talked about how they found this volcano in this unexplored place. And inside this volcano was animals and plants and trees they've never seen before. So the first thousands and thousands of years of life, no one even knew these things were here. And now, more trees, more flowers, more color. That's what our God does. We keep inventing things to go deeper and deeper into the ocean. And every time we go deeper, we find new animals, new species, new corals, new creations. That's the God we serve. This last week, there was basically billionaires fighting over who's going to be first to go into space, right? Uh, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff happening in our world. And when you look into space and you look at through a new telescope or something, what do you discover? More solar systems, more stars, more planets. Do you think this is the God that wants to give you ordinary? See, God created each of us in such unique ways. In fact, look around. No one looks like you. You have different personalities and gifts that no one else has. God paints animals that you'll never see with the most exotic colors you don't even know about. There's new smells in this world, new senses, new things to explore. It goes on and on. Jesus isn't going to change your life forever and then give you ordinary. If that is what has happened to you so far, you're not doing it right. 
God wants you to experience a joy like you've never felt before. Do you know this joy in your life? Let me give you one more nugget of truth that hopefully will change your perspective as you move forward. The third key, if you will, it's that God is an extravagant giver. Six jars that can carry 20 to 30 gallons a piece, 120 to 180 gallons of wine filled to the brim at this wedding. This is some obscure town in the middle of nowhere with just a few of the disciples that even attended it. They probably had so much wine that this town was drinking from this wedding for, I don't know, months and months and months, depending on the town. When he later takes five loaves of bread and two fish to feed 5,000 men and their families, does he make just enough to feed everybody there? Nope. After they're done, there's 12 full baskets left over. He gave them more than they could eat. Why? I mean, he's God. Don't you think he'd be good at math? They ate and ate and ate all they wanted, and then there were leftovers. At this wedding, they drank and drank and drank, and there was leftovers. What is he saying? I think he's saying, I'm an extravagant giver. I am always going to bless you. Trust me, and I will bring you a joy like you cannot get anywhere else. And it will be a lot. Do you know this joy? John 10, 10, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You are his bride. He doesn't want to make sure your needs are met. He wants to extravagantly bless your life in a joy they will never experience anywhere else. Do you know this God? Ephesians 3, 20, 21 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power, that is at work within us. To him, the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Do you know this extravagant giver that's willing to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine? Where does he do it? With his church. Who is his church? His church is his bride. He wants to take his bride and give immeasurably more than you can even imagine. Is that the God you know? you don't know him, it's time. Get rid of that old wineskin and open up the new stuff. Open the new wineskin for the joy of God to, to rush in and fill. Our final thought with John chapter two is this. John, make sure to tell us it happens on the third day. Three days later, Jesus brings a miracle that brings new wine into the world that will bring a new joy to our lives. How amazing is that? He's alluding to what happens to us with the miracle of Jesus on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 says, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he may be buried, that he was raised on the third day. That was the miracle that changed everything. It was a new wine that would be immeasurably more in joy to our lives in every way by an extravagant giver. Is this the God you know? If you don't, it's time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. No one's exempt. We all need a Savior. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is our groom, and we are the bride. Romans 10.9 says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The old is gone. The new wine is poured. If you're listening to this and you don't know this joy, it's time. I'll pray for you. Put it in the comments below. Let me know. But right now, mess with your mouth and believe in your heart. This is the new wine. Enjoy. And I'll see you next time.